Howdy swim fans, here with another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, I'm sharing with you how to endure the pandemic as a swim coach. If you're a swimmer, welcome. But I encourage you to check out the Whiteboard Wednesday I did, how to endure the pandemic as a swimmer, link in the description below. This video is specifically for swim coaches, parents, board members, how to handle this crazy time that we live in, this pandemic, because the reality is over 95% of pools around the world are shut down. And as a swim coach, parent, or board member, just a member of the community, we all have to adapt. And this can be an extremely frightening time. So just know that we're all in this together, but we can't just twiddle our fingers and hope that this problem goes away. We have to adapt to the new reality. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a few strategic ways you can go about addressing this and how you can follow up with communication with a few different stakeholders that could include the members of your of your club, the athletes themselves, your coaching staff, as well as the community. A little bit of background about myself. Before launching my swim pro, I was a swim coach for over eight years, everything from age group all the way up through senior level. I've interacted with everyone you can think of on the board level, members of the community, as well as the athletes themselves. I've been in your shoes as a swim coach and I understand the different difficulties. I still coach today actually, whether it's masters or the age group swimmers, so I know what it's like to be in your situation. Now, of course, a pandemic has never occurred before, so we're all learning from each other, but let's take a big deep breath. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to adjust your mindset. As a swim coach, you're used to going to the pool, writing a swim workout, and worrying about the wet side. Now, if you're an owner of the club and you do have the dry side responsibilities as well, if you're a coach, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's how you've approached coaching so far in your career. And what I'm telling you is the first step that you need to do is you have to actually change your mindset around what it is that you actually do. This is about your profession, how it's actually changed in the last 30 days or so in the Mar month of March 2020, whether you're watching this in the future or not is a regardless of the timeline, but your pr profession has actually changed and the role of a swim coach in 2022, 2023 and beyond is actually going to be different than it was up until this point. So it's really important to shift your mindset and think about it from a long-term approach. I would advise against sitting around waiting for the pools to open back up and doing absolutely nothing. That is probably the worst thing that you can do. I am here to empower you that you should think about this from a long-term perspective. That could mean three months without a pool. It could mean six months without a pool. Think about it as if you had an 18 month window that you have no access to a pool and don't think of it, oh, well, I become irrelevant if there's no pool. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Think about it from the perspective of what kind of value, deliver that value, what can you do in the meantime where the pool is no longer accessible? So instead of thinking of yourself as a swim coach, I want you to reframe your role and your mindset as a life coach. And we'll talk about what that means, but you need to take a holistic approach to this entire situation. So don't think of yourself as a swim coach. I have the dotted lines crossing that out because you're not a swim coach. There's no pool. You have to you have to come to grip with reality. There is no pool. It is a finite period of time. And at the end, you know, I talk about positivity. There is an end to this. We will get back to the pools. But if you just think about it from the perspective of I will return to the pool at some point in the near future, you're setting yourself up for complete failure. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to communicate and engage with different stakeholders in your community. Who are the different stakeholders? They're your athletes, your coaches, your parents, your board members, the community itself, and that can be other coaches and other teams in your locality, in your LMSC, or in your LSC if you're in the United States. Everyone's broken up a little bit differently, but communicating with the members of your community and also the businesses. If you have partnerships with different organizations that are partnering with your team, you need to communicate. And a little bit later in the video, we're gonna talk about how you can communicate specifically to each of those different audiences and different things you need to think about and building a plan of attack so that way you are strategically set up to communicate appropriately. Now I mentioned being a life coach. This is super important because you're not a swim coach anymore because there's no more swimming pool. Remember, it's finite. You will return to the pool, but you have to change your mindset in the short term of thinking about this, that you are a life coach. What does that mean? Take a holistic approach to your profession. That means you're not just delivering swim workouts in the pool when that returns, you're also talking about dry land, nutrition, 
goal setting, setting smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, time bound, realistic, results based. And we have a whiteboard Wednesday, how to set smart goals. This is an awesome time while you're away from the pool to focus on some of these things that are not the swim workouts. Maybe they're the dry land workouts or nutrition or coaching on just overall life. We talk about how swimming teaches life lessons. Now it is their time to put those life lessons to work and show how they apply outside of the water. Now, before we talk about the financing, which is extremely important, I want to talk about communication because this is probably the biggest takeaway that you should take of this video. Like, what is your actual plan of attack? What do you do? Step one, two, and three. You need to communicate a little bit differently and at different frequencies to each audience that you have. So let's start with the members. And when I say members, we're talking about your parents, the people who are actually paying you money and they're funding your salary as a coach. These are the people that you actually need to start with. The athletes, yes. We think about the athletes first because how do I get into the pool? I can't get into the pool. How do I send them dry land? That's probably the first thing you think about, which is very important. You want to think about your athletes. That's it's incredibly important. But they're not the ones who are paying your salary. You need to think about the members. What kind of value can you deliver to the members of your community, the members of your team? So the first step you should do is you should talk to every single parent on the phone or video call. If you have less than 100 athletes on your team, the head coach has no excuse for not calling every single parent. Don't worry, they're not traveling. They have nothing else to do other than take care of their kids and entertain them. They would love to hear from you, whether it's a phone call or a video call. You might get a lot of voicemails. That's fine. Try and set these up and spend as much time as you can listening to the parents of the athletes that you coach. You need to communicate to them that you have a long-term plan. You're not just waiting for the pools to open. You're actually thinking about how you can deliver value with the absence in the absence of a pool. So not only are you communicating your long-term plan, but you're actually listening to them and you're asking for feedback. So you present to them the ideas that you have, whether that's dry land, nutrition, doing interactive games. We'll talk about a few different things that you can do. So you figure out what your game plan is, and then you present that and you listen to their feedback. The parents will have a ton of feedback for you because they're probably going nuts with their kids at home all day, 24 seven. So they will definitely have ideas and it's your job as a coach to listen to the feedback of your parents and actually implement what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. So it's really important to make a connection. If you have a staff of multiple coaches, this is a great way to get them involved. Set up a multi-person, break up your list. If you have 500 athletes, it's still no excuse not to have someone communicate with every single athlete. This is where you have to put on your entrepreneur hat and you think about yourself not only as a swim coach, but as a life coach and as an entrepreneur, because at the end of the day, this is a business, whether you're a nonprofit or you're set up as a coach owned team, it doesn't matter. You are serving your members. You have to figure out how to deliver value. That's step one. The next audience you want to think about who you probably thought about first is your athletes. Of course you think athletes first. This is why you're hired as a coach. So it's important that you address the members. Now let's talk about the athletes themselves. I encourage you to empower them to think, how do you be active every single day? That could be five days a week. Now, of course, it needs to be optional because depending on if you're in the United States or another country or municipality, there are actually different rules when it comes to, you know, safety and you have to think about risk management. I know USA Swimming is a little bit different policy than some other countries in the world. And tort law actually varies by state. So check in with legal counsel. I'm sure someone on your swim team is a lawyer of some capacity and think about what kind of waiver you can put or what kind of disclaimer so that everything you tell the athletes to do while it's in their house or in a safe area in their backyard or wherever it is, it is covered by some sort of insurance. And at the end of the day, you need to keep your athletes active, but don't just send them any dry land activity, any exercise like, okay, we're gonna do 50 pushups today. Go do 50 pushups or go, go run a mile today. And then, you know, check in with your friends to see how much money, how much uh, running that they did. You need to be more specific, just like you go to the pool with a training program and a seasonal plan. You need to plan the same thing. Remember, you're not a swim coach, you're a life coach. So the training is only one element. If you need dry land advice, my swim pro has a ton of dry land content, including dry land training programs in our app. If you reach out to me directly, we can see if we can do like a group discount for your team that we can create a custom code for you. So let us know, reach out to me directly, but you need to set up a schedule 
and you need to get involved. I recommend getting involved yourself. If you're telling the kids to do a certain dry land circuit, or you're following something online, whether it's my swim pro or somewhere else, do the dry land with them. Do the activity, go through that punishment yourself. Enjoy the process of doing that dry land training. I say get the parents involved. Have the, do figure out what kind of dry land that you can do with the parents. If you have younger swimmers, this would be a great way to let them connect. It can be a great way to have the athlete challenge the parent. I do recommend though, safety is first. So check out the other whiteboard ones I did linked in the description on how to work out in your home. Obviously you need to have the right space. You need to have the right environment so that it's safe. You're not gonna have any distractions. Once you get that taken care of, then you can invite the athlete, the parent, the cousin, whoever it is inside the house, get everyone involved. Next, let's talk about coaches. So this is your staff. If you are the only full-time head coach, or maybe you're part-time, you need to over-communicate with your staff. You can't forget about the coaches just because they're hourly and you can't afford to pay them anymore. Doesn't mean you forget about them. You have to keep them engaged and be transparent about the finances that you have at your club, at your team, at your business. We'll talk about finances in just a second. You will not have coaches when you open back up, whether that's in three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months, if you do not communicate with them. Remember, you cannot run every single practice yourself. Unless you have a very small team, you need more than one coach. These coaches, times are gonna be hard here in the economy. They may get another job and they may get a job that they enjoy and they get paid more and times are tough and money is gonna come down to the line. So if you don't engage your coaches, you're not gonna have coaches to come back to your program when you do actually open up if you can retain all of your swimmers. I, did, I do wanna to touch on one element of the community that might not be so obvious. There are other teams in your area, you know other coaches. It's super important to connect with these coaches and ask them, what are you guys doing? Learn from them. How are they differentiating themselves from what the soccer teams are doing? You gotta be differentiated. Traditionally, your differentiation was the pool. Okay, I joined the swim team to go to the pool. When you go to soccer practice, you go to the soccer field. Now we're in a different dynamic where everyone's pretty much stuck at home. If they can go outside, they're not doing anything in a group setting. So think, how can you differentiate your programming? So it's not just go run when they don't need to be on the swim team to go run, right? So how can you engage the team members that you already have and the connection you already have with the athletes and with the parents to do something really creative? Here's an example. You can do different kinds of games. You can do different kinds of activities. You can do Pictionary over Zoom. It can be completely unrelated to swimming or related to swimming. You can do giveaways. You can do contests. Do like a TikTok contest. The kids are probably bored as can be going through every single TikTok. There's only so many hours a day you can spend on social media. Find a way to leverage that and empower people to connect with each other and let your athletes see each other. That is the power of technology. Maybe you have some kind of a group setting with a parent involved, of course, you know, be safe. Maybe you have a Zoom call once a week with your team. I do recommend, I did an interview with James Gibson, the CEO and head coach of the Energy Standard, and he talked about how he is engaging his athletes from that elite perspective. He has athletes all over the world. He talks about how they're training. Make sure you check it out, linked in the description below. Now we're gonna talk about the business and finance piece of this, because this is super important. This, depending on your financial situation and what your role is at the club, whether again, you're the coach, it's a coach-owned team, nonprofit, board member, parent. You have to ask the hard questions and you have to communicate with the right people. That is the board. That is the people who ultimately decide how much money you're going to get paid. Or if you're in that position, it's how much money are you paying your staff? The questions, there's three questions I have that you need to know the answer to. And there is no BS. You have to know the answer. The first question is how much money is in the bank? If you are the head coach and this is, or you're a full-time coach and we're in this pandemic time, it is unacceptable to not have transparency of how much money is in the bank. And if anyone has a problem, send them this video, send them to me, I'll see what I can do to help. But it is unacceptable to not know how much money is in the bank, number one. Number two is how much money are you burning every single month? Given the expenses, maybe you don't have to rent the pool, maybe you do, you have certain fixed costs, you have the salaries, your salary, or maybe it's different coaching, there's different variable costs. How much money are you spending every single month? Let's say you have 100,000 in the bank, we're spending $20,000 per month. You will run out of money in five months. And before then, fiscally responsibly, someone's gonna get a pay cut. Someone's gonna get let go. So it's super important that you understand these very basic things of like how much money is in the bank, 
How much are we spending every single month? Very, very simple. We don't need to get in the weeds, just at a, at a basic level. What are those two numbers? And the third number, which is sort of variable, when will you stop paying me? If you are the head coach, if this lasts, remember long-term approach, if this lasts six months and you're not gonna get potentially the kind of dues that you're used to getting, how much money is in the bank? How much are you burning? When are you gonna stop getting paid? Because when you understand this and you have that open dialogue with the right people, it takes a lot of stress off of yourself to understand these are the levers at play, these are the things that are moving, and if we don't do X, Y, and Z, then we're gonna run out of money faster. So you don't wanna to have to worry about these things. This is not necessarily the coach's job. It is the coach's job to be the life coach, but some of these things are sort of out of your control and you're less familiar with the business side of it, which is why it's super important to just know these three things and at least voice your concern to the person who is responsible for these things. So that way they know that you're thinking about it and that way you don't have to think about this and they can give you the reassurance that yes, you have a job and you're gonna get paid X, Y, Z for the next three months. If this happens, then we're gonna to have to take a pay cut. If this happens, then we're gonna let go of this person. So you have to be upfront about this because I, like I said, it is unacceptable not to know the answer to those three questions. And if they say any BS like it depends, well, it depends on what? If A happens, then B happens. Be very, very, very specific about that because I don't want any coaches losing their job unexpectedly because they didn't ask these three specific questions. Now I'll flip the gears here. Let's talk about positivity, a little bit of a summer note there, but I want you to sell positivity. There is a finite time frame to this. We don't know how long it is, but we will get back to the pool. Things will get back to normal. It will be a new normal because like I said, you'll never be just a swim coach again. The, the world is changing. The sport of swimming will be different after this pandemic. And because of that, it's super important to change your approach. Make sure you sell that positivity, communicate, that the health that, that, that we need to apply, that that is more important than training. It's okay to take a break from the pool for two months or three months or six months because at the end of the day, our health and well-being of us as athletes, as coaches, parents, grandparents, the community, that is more important. Given that, sell the positivity that at the end of this, we are going to end up helping the public health, our community, and we will get back to swimming just like we used to, but it's gonna be a little bit more exciting for a number of reasons because this is an opportunity to work on the details that are often forgotten about. So for example, a lot of times swimmers may have overuse injuries, they may have weaknesses, whether it's flexibility. This is an opportunity to really focus on some of those areas that we have neglected as coaches or athletes. It's, it's about this opportunity of time to put in that specific focus. Remember, you're a life coach. You're not just doing swim workouts. It's the dry lane, it's the nutrition, it's the goal setting. Offer some gratitude and share positivity. And if you coach younger swimmers, this is potentially an easier way to calm them down of saying that you're not gonna get slower by taking two or three months out of the water. You're, if anything, you're probably gonna be a lot faster because A, you grew. And B, we were able to take a, take a mental and physical break from the wear and tear of swimming. And we were able to focus and, and reset our mindset around something to improve in other areas that we weren't able to allocate that amount of time to. So I hope this video was helpful for coaches and board members and parents to think about how to endure during a pandemic. I wanna leave you guys with a few more resources linked in the description below. First one is there is a Facebook group called Swim Coaches Idea and Exchange. Make sure you check that out if you're on Facebook. It's an awesome way to learn from other coaches. I think over 20,000 members in that Facebook group. My Super also has a Facebook group. It's a little bit more for athletes, but I recommend the uh, Facebook group for the swim coaches. I also recommend that interview I mentioned with James Gibson, head coach of the Energy Standard that just won the ISL. Super experienced coach, very professional. He doesn't necessarily give advice, but he offers how he is, what the steps he is doing with his team. And he has athletes all over the world, a whole nother set of logistical challenges, as you might imagine. I also recommend checking out another video, we'll link in the description, by Fitter and Faster 2. This is like a meeting of, Fitter and Faster Tour, they have a meeting of the minds, David Arluck, a number of different coaches, including Todd Schmidt and some others from USA Swimming. They all come together for about an hour and they talk about 
exactly what we talked about here, a little bit longer, an hour and 15 minutes. And they overview you know, how to think about this as a coach when it comes to dues, when it comes to engaging your athletes, engaging your parents. A lot of good nuggets, so I recommend that. We'll link that video in the description. And then the final video is one that I've made on my personal vlog, which I would have never thought would be related to this, but it is because of the crazy times that we live in. It is how to run a remote company. Now you might be thinking, I don't run a company. The answer is yes, you do, because you are now in a remote environment. Last time I checked, you're not gonna go and communicate in person to your, your coaching staff, your parents, your board members, or your athletes. And so you need to reset your mind, similar to what we talked about, change your mindset of how you approach your communication, your strategy. And in that video, also linked in the description, I talk about 10 different tips for how to manage in a remote environment. It comes from yours truly. So I hope you enjoy that video and all the other ones linked in the description. This was Whiteboard Wednesday, wishing you all the best and stay safe.